So here we go, everybody. Um, we have Marianne Williamson, who is really a darling of the left in many respects. We have a name that has now been floated to primary Joe Biden in 2024 that I wholly agree with. Um, and it's being floated in official quarters, too. So let's go ahead and take a look at this video, and then we'll come back and discuss. Senator Bernie Sanders, former campaign manager, predicts President Biden will face a progressive primary challenger in 2024. Those comments come as the president faces slumping poll numbers on his overall approval rating and on key issues like the economy and coronavirus. Correspondent Alexandria Hoff has the story tonight from Washington. The president has every intention of running for re-election. But he may be met with friendly fire. Former presidential campaign manager for Senator Bernie Sanders told Politico this week, quote, if nothing else, a progressive running who gets a lot of support will demonstrate that the ideas that the progressive movement embraces are, in fact, popular. In modern U.S. history, an incumbent president has never lost a primary nomination. But when the primary was competitive, it cost the sitting president. Presidents Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and George H.W. Bush were each challenged. And while they won the nomination, each lost the general election. As talk of a possible primary challenger has spread, progressive names have been floating around, like Nina Turner, a former Ohio State senator, and former presidential candidate Marianne Williamson. With any campaign not likely to form until after the midterms, the Biden White House does have some time before they have to calculate real competition. So Nina Turner... She can very well win that congressional seat that she barely lost last time. She has the ability to do that. And if she were to run again, I think she should run for that. Um, now, there is a little bit of a paradox and a conundrum with running against Biden in a primary when he's an incumbent Democratic president. It's true to say that that never works. I tell you guys, it never works. It never works. You're never going to unseat an incumbent because what happens is partisanship kicks in on the next level and you have basically Democratic voters fall in line like sheep, like lemming. And um, lemming? <laughs> Lemmings? You get the point. And um, you're just not going to unseat an incumbent president. It wouldn't work on the Republican side. It wouldn't work on the Democratic side. Um, you go into it kind of knowing that. But I will say this, if Marianne Williamson runs, we absolutely change the conversation and the national dialogue and shift it back on the grounds where it should be, where we're talking about issues, we're talking about policy substance, we're pressuring Biden, all the pressure he's getting right now is from his right. Everybody in D.C. tells him, all his staffers, everybody he's surrounded by, Oh, no, don't do that. We can't do that. Oh, no, don't do that. That's too bold. Oh, no, don't do that. That'll make your poll numbers go down, even though it would make his poll numbers go up if he did actual left-wing stuff. So all the pressure he feels is from the right. He needs to be reminded, no, the stuff the American people want are out here on the left, and you're having a skewed conversation in the Oval Office. And look, we have a whole younger generation now that's fed up. That They're fed up. They hate politics as it is. They hate business as usual. They hate the status quo. Nothing's ever worked for them their entire lives. And they're just waiting for a real voice to channel those, that pain and, and those frustrations and to give people real concrete solutions. So she should run. Now, look, it is also, got to keep it real, it is also, in a sense, career suicide, because they even used that against Bernie. When Bernie ran in 2016, Bernie floated a primary against Obama in 2012, and that hurt him. So, in a sense, it is career suicide. But Marianne Williamson, I don't know what her future political aspirations are, or if she even has any, but this could be her moment in this sense. We can break the record of the number of votes that a challenger to an incumbent Democratic president gets. And that'll send a clear message. And like I said, that shifts the conversation in the media back to the grounds where it should be. And look, she would I'm not going to I'm not going to front here. She would have to run a laser-focused campaign on the issues that matter the most and she would have to find a way to be palatable, honestly not just to the Democratic base but to disaffected independents and even people who might lean right who are fed up with the system. And if she runs and she goes all in on Medicare for all, free college, student loan debt elimination, a living wage, unionization, ending the wars, standing up 
to the status quo and to corporations and to lobbyists and billionaires. And she does it aggressively, she does it proudly, and she does it with a good team around her. Oh, she can make some noise. She Understand, even if you get 15% of the vote in a primary against an incumbent Democrat, I think that would break the record. And shit, we can get 15, 20, maybe even 25% if she runs the campaign right. And the other thing is, don't get it twisted. This would be one of the only things that would actually unify the left again. See, that was one of the things about the Bernie Sanders campaigns that's underrated in terms of its impact. He got a lot of people involved politically who previously weren't involved politically, but also it unified the left in a way that we hadn't seen in such a long time. You have all these disparate factions of the left who are always at each other's throats and always arguing with each other and... They take their eye off the ball oftentimes, and they're not talking about the issues that matter, and it becomes about these, you know, small disagreements that blow up into big disagreements. Well, here you have a unifying figure who could take the different factions of the right, of, excuse me, of the left, and bring them together to fight the right and to fight the corporate Democrats. And so the upsides far outweigh the downsides. And the other thing is, you have a spark again for a movement that's now latent. Bernie started a movement, and now the movement is factionalized and disparate and the wind are out of the sails. Well, let's bring some of that wind back to the sails. Let's unify again. Let's focus on the things that matter. Let's remind people that a better world is possible. Because right now, you don't get that when it's just the cult of Trump on the right and the total sycophants to corporations and big business. And then you have the the neoliberal cult on the democratic side where they're centrists and think a better world isn't possible and the best we can do is tweaks around the edges. I mean, FDR and LBJ are rolling over in their grave right now. So Marianne Williamson would need to run and say, look, I'm the real voice of the people and that's why you need to vote for me. I'm actually going to listen to the American people. And look, I would have specific things that she runs on that could be a game changer in American politics. One of the ideas I like that I've been arguing for until I'm blue in the face is this notion of why are we just talking about upgrading our infrastructure? Why aren't we talking about having the best infrastructure in the world by far? Number one in the world. Let's lap everybody else. Let's get in front of Japan and China and, and other developed countries. Let's have the best infrastructure that's an envy of the world. Let's take that spirit of the New Deal and reapply it today. Let's do a law where we have national direct ballot initiatives so that every time you go vote for president, you also get to vote on the top five political issues of the time. Wouldn't it be amazing if the American people got to directly vote on whether or not the minimum wage should be a living wage? Wouldn't it be amazing if the American people got to directly vote on um, legalizing marijuana? Because I have way more faith in the American people than I do in corrupt politicians, and I think at least 80% of the time the American people would make the right decision. You can run and put this idea front and center. It's a way to get around the corruption in Washington, D.C. is to have the people have a direct say. Look, that's just two ideas of what Marianne can run on and focus on. And these are ideas that would fire people up, that would get people involved. And uh, again, I'm under no illusions. It's never happened that uh, an incumbent president has been unseated by a primary challenger in their own party, but the benefits far outweigh the downsides. Because what do we have to lose? We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. And what Biden demonstrated in his reaction to Bernie and Bernie's movement, Biden took a very different approach to Bernie Sanders than Hillary Clinton did. Hillary, after she got the nomination, it was, it was just like, fuck off, we won, piss off, we don't need you. Biden at least tried to be like, hey, Bernie people, I kind of like you, do you like me? Maybe I'll do some symbolic gestures to... So he's already shown this is a man who folds to the pressure wherever it's coming from. Oftentimes it comes from the right. Almost all the time it comes from the right in Washington, D.C., so he's going right. Well, now we have to remind him, no. Imagine we have a primary challenge against Joe Biden. You get 25% of the vote in a primary challenge against Joe Biden as he's an incumbent president. You think that doesn't make him fall in line? You think that doesn't open his eyes? In, in a sense, you think Marianne Williamson running won't inspire other Marianne Williamson to then get involved? You think it won't unify the left in a way we haven't been unified since maybe Bernie 2016? Look, the time is now, and people are talking about it. And, I look, I'll be prepared if she does it. Because you know damn well, in many ways, she's going to be treated unfairly. And we're going to need to 
be her attack dogs. And um, I'm ready to knuckle up for that fight because everybody has a lot of pent up aggression and anger over the fact that we're not moving in the direction we need to be moving in. We had a transformational moment and a non-transformational president. And um, look, I'm all for it. I think she should do it. I think Marianne Williamson should run in 2024 against Joe Biden. I think that will change the conversation, unify the left, get people more involved, uh, put a spotlight on the issues that matter the most, get a whole new generation involved in politics, inspire other people to run, let people know better things are possible. And she should reclaim this mantle, man. The mantle of actually, no. You know who the extremists are? It's the Republicans in Washington, D.C. and the corporate Democrats. They are the extremists. Maybe I'm the moderate because I'm representing the will of the American people. So, people, you're going to be given an option now. Now you have an option to vote for somebody who's not bought by big donors and billionaires and corporations. You're going to have an opportunity to vote for yourself, your own voice in Washington, D.C. That's what I represent. I'm the true moderate. I'm the true centrist. I'm right in the center of mainstream American political opinion. She should reclaim that mantle. She should run on that. Let's do it. Run, Marianne, run. Let's change the game. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.